Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is Sunday, April 21st. I had to like count. <laughs> and it has been a day, let me tell you. So remember on Sundays, Bill works six to six. So Sundays are normally reserved for me for, you know, getting house chores done, the grocery store, and I take care of dinner because Bill cooks, cooks every other time. And what I do as far as dinner is it's usually something pretty easy because I am fully transparent in that I am not a cook. There are a few things that I can make. So usually on Sundays, what we have now is pizza. Um, Bill has cauliflower crust pizza, and I used to have that. But I have relaxed a tiny, tiny bit as far as eating everything low carb. The pizza that I get, because I know I don't want to go back to eating the way that I was eating, okay? Because, no, I don't. But there are some things that I need to enjoy. Pizza is one of them. I don't know what it is about that cauliflower crust. I don't like it. Bill likes it. But oh, so what I get is I get an Amy's personal pizza. And I usually only eat three quarters of it. I don't eat the whole thing. So on the day that I normally have pizza, and we normally have it once a week, I'm very conscious of what I eat the rest of the day. Um, like I had a very low carb lunch, although I did have a cappuccino from Dunkin' Donuts, which I will mention, I will talk about that. So, yeah, I've already done. Only thing I have to do is uh, Bill likes a side salad with his pizza, so I will make that today. But before I start talking about all of that, can I just tell you a pet peeve of mine with pattern designers and symbols? Now, you know, I'm under the impression that there are a ton of symbols that you can use as far as symbols for a key. Can I just say that I am annoyed as hell by a couple symbols. See this one and this one? Of course, in the pattern, they're right next to each other in places. So I almost stitched the wrong color. They're both green, but very different greens. And then there's also this. And then where is the other one? This. Now, that's a pink and that's a flesh color. So you would kind of know. But it's just like really like having these symbols right next to each other, especially these two. No, ma'am, sir, can we do something else about that? Yeah, just a little pet peeve of mine. But um, I have not stitched in the last two days. I stitched a tiny bit on Friday. I was done work at a reasonable hour. It was a hot mess, though. The job was only like 45 minutes, but just a cluster and then I had stuff to do afterwards, but I was done work at a reasonable time. So I did get some stitching done. So I was taking a sip of my cappuccino. Um, I, I try to do, and I've explained this too. I try to do my beading as I go along and also the back stitch. And the beading, you can see there are beads here, beads here. There are beads that outline the ribbon. I used to a while ago, and let me get to stitching because I've already like outlined this. I used to use the clear thread because then you could just go gangbusters with beads and it wouldn't matter. But now what I do, and I don't know why I changed, I use a similar thread color to do the beading. I don't know why. I don't have any explanation, but that's what I do now. And I think someone, that was a question I'd received. So, but yeah, so Friday night we went to dinner for Bill's birthday and we went to Texas Roadhouse. Now, we don't really go out to eat anymore. First of all, it saves us money and stuff we make here at home is usually better. Truly. Well, Bill wanted to go out, so 
I had already had in my head, and I, sh I should trust myself. Like, I should not change my mind. When I decide to get something, that's what I should get. I am the kind of person that when I like something at a restaurant, I'll get it every single time because I don't want to be disappointed. And yeah. So I really like at Texas Roadhouse their chicken Caesar salad. It's really good. Before anyone says, I realize that it is high in calories, but it is low carb. And I had planned for it. Like I really hadn't had anything really to eat. Like I was really fasting that day. So we get to the restaurant and it was like cold that day. It was chilly. And you know, that's another little story. So let me let me go off on a tangent and backtrack. I don't know how you guys do it. And I had messaged Jill. This time of year in Maryland is like right on the cusp of some days are hot, some days are cold. So it's like, do you put your air conditioning on? Do you put your heat on? Me? Because I work at home, I don't want to be uncomfortable during the day. Well, I, we had had the air conditioning on because we had had a spell where it was like 75 for a couple days or something. And we usually keep it 72 in here. And just a couple degrees can really make it hot, okay? So I woke up. Was it Thursday? No, it was Friday. Yeah. No, I had Wednesday. Wednesday was when I worked the long day. I had woken up and put the heat on because it was like 66 or 68 in the house. And I went, no, I'm not going to be uncomfortable all day. Well, I worked until like 10, 15 that night and didn't realize that it had gotten to be like 76 in the house. Didn't realize it. Well, I should have known because I was comfortable. <laughs> when I'm comfortable, it's usually hot in the house. So Bill was in bed and my office is right off of his bedroom. And I hear him get up and he says, what the fuck temperature is in this house? And I, that didn't immediately click to my head. And I was like, I am so sorry that I turned on the heat and I forgot and didn't look to see what it had reached. And so he flipped it onto air conditioning because 76 is way too hot in this house. And, you know, he kind of yelled like I, you know, it wasn't like he was screaming at me, but he was just like, what the fuck temperature is it in here? So I was like, OK, well, I guess I'm not turning the heat on anymore. So flash forward to Friday, just this past Friday, I wake up again. It's like 68. 66 but I said you know what I'm just gonna put on a sweater and I was cold all day now it had only reached outside like 60 so he comes home and I kid you not he comes home and he's like why didn't you put the heat on I busted out laughing I said what so you could yell at me again he's like I didn't yell at you I said you yelled at me the other night about putting the heat on and uh, he turned the heat on. He was like, it's fucking cold in here. <laughs> so we had a good little chuckle. And so now I will not hesitate to put the heat on. It is still chilly. We have the heat on. Because it's getting down to like 40 or 45 at night. That's way too chilly to not have the heat on. And I had messaged Jill about it. And she was like, yeah, our heat's off. She says, once it gets this time of year, she said... I don't flip back and forth like she leaves hers off. They put clothes on. Yeah. Um, not me. So there was that. But um, so we get to the restaurant Friday. And mind you, like I said, I had been cold all day. So we get there and I decided I wanted something hot to eat. I didn't want a cold Caesar salad. Although if I remember now. The chicken is warm on the salad, which if I would have thought about that, I would have just gotten that salad. So what I wound up getting was um, herb crusted chicken, a side Caesar salad, and actually a baked potato. Because I've been doing some research on food. And, you know, so many people say, you know, you need to eat food in its natural source and a baked potato because Bill like kind of gave me a side eye and I was like, 
I'm fucking having a baked potato. It's not a french fry. It's not a potato chip. It is potato in its natural source. Just like a lot of people tout the benefits of sourdough bread, like real baked sourdough bread because it's lower on the glycemic index. So when I was at the grocery store today, because I love bread, I bought a loaf that's sliced and the slices are small, so it won't be too, too bad. I bought a loaf of sourdough bread to have from the bakery. And once in a while, it won't be every day because again, moderation, I am going to have a piece of sourdough bread with some butter. Or someone on the um, intermittent fasting group actually has sourdough bread with cottage cheese because I like cottage cheese. Cottage cheese and avocado. Let's go. I bought guacamole. I bought cottage cheese. So I might try that like for lunch one day. But yeah, I was like, no, I, you know, feel like I've been so very restrictive. And Bill, by the way, has lost another five pounds. He's now lost a total of 50. He is at 210. It's amazing. I told him, I said, you need to fucking eat something. Like, you need to eat a piece of cake or a cheeseburger or something. I'm like, you're on the cusp of being too thin. I said, please, please don't lose any more weight. Like, he's done. Truly. And he had not bought any new clothes. His clothes were falling off of him. And, by the way, his belt broke. So, for the last week, he has been holding his pants up with Velcro cable ties. I said, Saturday, we are going to get you a belt. So, he wakes me up Saturday morning and is like, I want to go to Walmart. Do you want to come with me? Sure. I had no plans. I had nothing to do on Saturday. So we go to Walmart and he's like, well, maybe you can get some clothes for yourself because things are baggy, like pants are baggy. Now, I think I told you, I started off, I was wearing a size 17 in juniors. I like the junior jeans at Kohl's, the Wallflower brand. I was in a 17 and they were approaching tightness. So, well, then I went to a 15 because I kept... I had two pairs or three pairs of size 15 jeans, and then I had two pairs of size 13. And actually, I have a bunch of capris, like khaki capris, that are a size 13 or 14 for summer because I don't wear shorts. I know. I'll wear those. And I had the forethought to keep those clothes because, yeah. Well, I had pulled the 15s out like a week and two weeks ago. And I've been wearing those because I, there's no way the 17s, I mean, I can, now I'm sliding right out of them. Well, yesterday, Bill's like, your pants look weird in the crotch. And I went, excuse me? Yeah, they're baggy. And I went, you know what? So last night at bedtime, I said, I need to try on the 13s. I got two pairs of 13 jeans and a pair of khaki, like, army green khaki pants, cargo pants, I should say, that are a 13. I am wearing the cargo pants today, and they are even baggy. Yeah, so, um, anyway, to say, so we go to Walmart, and we went to the Walmart actually by my dad's house. The Walmart by us is just... And, and I hate to sound like this, but it is like a fucking freak show. Like, it, and the traffic around that area, it's just so insanely chaotic and messy that, no. So we go to the one by my dad's, which actually is a really nice one, but it was like 25 minute ride. That's okay. We, I mean, we were up at 730 in the morning going. Can I just go on a little bit of a, this is going to be like a ranty stitch with me because I got some things to say. It seems like, and correct me ladies if I'm wrong, the trendy clothes are in the women's section. The men, their stay timeless. Their stays exactly the same. Cargo pants, jeans, shirts, that's it. Bill's like, well, okay, I'll see, just meet up with me when you look through the clothes. 
Can I tell you that in the women's section in Walmart, 90% of the clothes were a half shirt. I'm not fucking wearing a half shirt. No, ma'am. I didn't even wear a half shirt when I was a teenager or in my 20s. I want a whole shirt. And I don't know where this trend came back, but like there's a bunch of clothes that look like Little House on the Prairie or even I saw some crocheted stuff. I'm not against anybody crocheting anything. It's needle art. I love it. But to wear it, like besides a sweater, like no, this just no, 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 no. So I got some socks. That's what I got. And I told Bill, he's like, you're going to need clothes soon. And I went, I realized that. I said, but I'm going to have to go to Kohl's. And so he was like, well, you should go to Kohl's this week because, guys, I am off work all this week. I'm so excited. My boss is on vacation. Let's go. So there will be some videos. And I'm hoping a bunch of stitching. Um, but yeah, so we come home. Now, I did get um, some socks and then I got a lip gloss that I really like from Wet n Wild. Their makeup is really cheap. I really like the lip gloss. It's like a shimmery pink. I'm a makeup junkie. Like, I love makeup. So I always look in that section. And then we picked up stuff for dinner. We had tacos last night. Really good. Yeah. So... Yeah, so we get home, and mind you, you know, Bill is working today, so he went to bed at 8 o'clock, and I actually went to bed because my back was just really hurting me from work this week and a bunch of stitching, and I need to be very conscious of my posture when I'm stitching. So I don't know if I told you guys because we didn't wind up doing it. There was a tree in our backyard that Bill wanted to have cut down because it was just hanging on his shed and it was just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, a neighbor across the street was having a tree cut down. So Bill had went over there a couple weeks ago and talked to the guys. And he said, the guys are going to come. And this was two weeks ago. The guys are going to come on Sunday. I was like, you're not going to be here. See, I, I... Um, am of the mindset and I'm trying to like break myself of it where there are certain things that the man should handle, right? Cars. Not that I can't take my car in for a repair, but because when I was single, I did that myself. But if I have a husband, uh, you handle the cars because I do the housework. I do all the computer stuff. Yeah. And so the outside the lawn, like getting a tree cut down, getting a roof put on. Yeah, that's you. You handle that. But he was like, the only day they can come is Sunday. So he tells me exactly what to say, where to show them. Like, we had to go through this whole thing. And I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I just, I don't know, I have anxiety about that kind of stuff. Because I don't, I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Let me tell you. I said to myself last night, I'm like, you know what, Danielle, it's, it's time to like get out of your comfort zone as far as handling stuff like that. So they were supposed to come at 730 this morning. So I was awake at seven and dressed. They got here at 723. Now I saw them pull up. So I didn't even wait till they came to knock on the door. I went out there. They were very nice. Good morning. I said, okay, let me show you where the tree is and how you can navigate through our yard. And they were done at right before noon. And let me tell you, it was only two gentlemen. They did such a fantastic job for two men. I was, I mean, they knew what they were doing. I was so impressed with what I feel is a good work ethic. And because what I would do, I was reading. I read the whole time they were here inside. So I showed them where the tree was and they gave me a thumbs up. And I said, okay, when you're done, just come knock on the door and I'll pay you because Bill had given me the money to pay them. And 
I was checking, like I can see the area where the tree was being cut out Bill's bedroom window. So I would read a couple chapters in my book and go look out there just to see. Well, when it came time, yeah, I could tell they were done and they were cleaning up. Again, highly, highly impressed with the way they cleaned up because I don't know if you know, but when you cut a tree down, there is debris and sawdust and stuff everywhere. These guys used a leaf blower. They used bags. They used a rake. They raked. They, they, they used a leaf blower on our entire yard to get all of the debris in one area so they could easily put it in a trash bag. Um, I did go out there twice and offer them water. So that I felt good about that. You know, it's a small kindness like that when someone is at your house doing some kind of work. Offer them a bottle of water, right? Wait a minute, I got to fix that one. And, of course. And, um... I'm going to have to flip this over because I went through like the wrong hole. Um, and then I saw they were cleaning up and they were just cleaning up. They were done in the backyard. They were just cleaning up in the driveway. So that's when I decided to go out and pay them. And I don't know what the etiquette is, like, if you tip these kinds of workers, but I gave them an extra $60. I don't know what the etiquette is, but I wanted to give them something more than what Bill had negotiated with them. And they seemed appreciative. They were just, they were so wonderful. And I, I and I don't even know what the company name was. <laughs> And I thank them for coming on a Sunday because we were the only job they had that day. And um, like I said, I, I, and I was also very proud of myself and it may sound ridiculous, but just handling that and not having anxiety. So I was waiting for them to get done to go to the grocery store. Now, you guys know how much I love the grocery store. And I, by love, I mean hate. Sometimes I will do Instacart on Sundays because I just don't have the mental energy to go to the grocery store. So I went because there I wanted to make sure I could get my pizza. And yeah, well, mind you, when I go to the store, I try to go early in the morning on Sunday at like 8 or 8.30. I didn't leave my house until 12.00. I fully expected busyness, crowds, and I was not incorrect. So in Maryland now, there are no more plastic bags. You have to bring your own bags or you pay for paper bags. I have reusable bags. I use the scanner at Giant, so that's what I did. So I get there, and have you ever had the carts like stick together, like when someone jams them together, they get like hooked up and then you can't get one out. Well, I had that happen where I had to pull out like five carts before I could get one. So right off the bat, I'm irritated. <laughs> so I throw my bags in the cart and I go in. Now in Giant, right when you walk in the door is where you get the scanner. And there's like a whole... It's like a little kiosk where you either scan your club card or you put in your phone number. Well, I cleaned off my key ring a long time ago and got rid of like all of those little tiny, you know, CBS card, food line card, blah, blah, blah. I had like 50 of those cards on there. I was like, no. So I just put my phone number in. Well, I'm standing there and normally when I go in there, nobody's waiting to get a scanner. And they also have these scanners at both entrances to the store. But I always seem to go in this one entrance. So I'm standing there because there's a woman that is waiting to get a scanner. And I see something that's popped up on the screen that says, please accept the terms. 
and she's just standing there. And I'm thinking, push the accept button, lady. <laughs> so she turns to me and she's like, this isn't working. And I said, well, did you push accept? She says, yeah, and it won't do it. So I went up there and yeah, no matter what button she pushed, it wasn't working. I said, okay, I'm going to the other kiosk at the other end of the store. So irritation number two already. I haven't even started the shopping trip yet, right? So I go down there, I get a scanner. I come back and I tell her the scanners are working down there. I'm not sure what happened because I saw her come back and be like, I think you have to reset the, I don't know what happened. I just went about my trip. But so I'm shopping and there is a woman that has two young kids and I want to say they were probably five or six. I get it. You don't have a babysitter. My mom always took us to the grocery store, but these kids were running around the entire store. Every aisle I went in, they were running around my cart. I almost skipped an aisle. I've done that. I have skipped an aisle to avoid running into the same annoying person. And I know I must sound awful, right? The same annoying person. These kids, let me tell you, I was just like, and the mother seemed completely, I just really messed that up. The mother seemed completely oblivious to these kids running around. Now, I don't know if she had been having a bad day or she was used to their hijinks. I don't have any idea. But I was just like, Jesus, take the wheel and get me out of this store. Then, so I decided, okay, we're having pizza tonight. And Bill is also working overtime tomorrow where I will be handling dinner tomorrow. So I decided we're going to have Manwich, which is Sloppy Joe, and we use ground turkey for it. Bill likes 647 Kaiser Rolls. Now, I could not remember if we had Kaiser Rolls in the freezer because we tend to do that because 647 bread sells out in our area, meaning it's not always easy to find it. So when we see it, we'll buy like two packs of rolls, two loaves of bread, whatever. I said, well, I, I need to try to get the rolls because if I don't get them and then we don't have them, I'm going to have to come out and get them tomorrow. So I go now the bread aisle in Giant, it's the last aisle of the store. So as soon as I get the bread and stuff, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to check out. Now, the glorious thing about using a scanner is that you don't have to take your stuff out of your bags and put it on the conveyor belt. You just hand the clerk the scanner. They do something and it puts it all in there. It's fantastic. That's the reason that I use that because it's so great. So I am in that aisle and... No 647 rolls, no hamburger rolls, no Kaiser rolls. All I saw was hot dog rolls. Well, that's not going to do me any fucking good. <laughs> so I wound up getting nothing and I thought, well, crap. Now I'm going to have to, we're going to have to just eat on regular bread, I guess. And then, so as part of Bill's lunch, because Bill eats the same lunch. Literally, he has eaten the same lunch for just about 15 years now. As part of his lunch, he eats a Jello sugar-free dark chocolate pudding cup. They did not have any dark chocolate pudding. They only had regular chocolate. So I'm like, God damn it. Like, so I got that, picked that up. And I'm like, I hate to tell him when they don't have something. Yeah. So then I check out, which... Actually, also was I felt bad for the cashier because for some reason the vegetables. So I don't scan the vegetables because I'd have to weigh them, print a ticket, blah, blah, blah. No, anything you want scanned, you give them the scanner and then anything you put up there. So usually I have bananas, tomatoes, cucumbers. That's it. 
stuff that you had, would have to weigh that's in the produce. Well, it wasn't cooperating. I'm not sure why he finally got it to work, but I could tell that he was like frustrated. So I get out of there and I decide for my aggravation, I'm going to stop at Dunkin' Donuts on the way home and get a cappuccino because it was past my eating window. It was approaching, by this time it was almost one thirty, And I said, yeah, I'm going to get a cappuccino with a mocha swirl in it. Because, man, the, the Dunkin' Donuts cappuccino, chef's kiss. Seriously. Well, I like to order through the mobile app. Because, first of all, you can customize it how many mocha swirls you want. Because I get less than what they recommend. And it's just easy. And you can just pay. And then when you go through the drive through you just say, oh, mobile order for Danielle Jones. And then you pull up and it's ready. Like, it's so quick and easy. Now, there are a lot of Dunkin' Donuts in my area. There are more Dunkin' Donuts than there are Starbucks. So right by the grocery store, on the way home, to, I would pass by two Dunkin' Donuts. Well, I wanted to go to the one that was closest because that way I could drink the coffee on the way home while I'm in my car. So I decide to, okay, I'm in the parking lot and... I start to drive to the Dunkin' Donuts and I'm like, well, shit, I need to start putting it in the mobile order. Well, I have to pull over because I'm safe with my phone. So I pull over and it's not recognizing my password. And I'm like, okay, so I have to reset my password. And then I'm hitting something wrong. So it's telling me that the passwords don't match because when you change your password, you have to like confirm it. I was 10 minutes sitting there. Mind you, groceries, stuff melting, right? Because I got some freezer stuff. I finally get it to work. Pay, get my coffee. And it's delicious. Well worth it. And then I'm at the light uh, before I get on the main highway. And I'm like, motherfucker. I forgot to get cherry tomatoes for salad. I was like, I am going to have to stop at fucking food line on my way home. Food line is on the way. Now, I say that and I say that with a chuckle because yesterday when we were at Walmart, Tyson makes these frozen blackened chicken strips that are actually really good. They're not breaded, but they're seasoned. So we will put those in the air fryer and have those, you know, for dinner. And I told, when we were at Walmart, I said, I can't believe they don't have those blackened chicken strips. And he's like, well, they're at Food Line. I said, I'm not traipsing to multiple grocery stores tomorrow. Oh, Danielle, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because, so when I was, and then realized I needed cherry tomatoes, I busted out laughing because I said, okay, well, it looks like I'm going to Food Lion. And, see, I'm smart, at least in this one regard. Remember I told you I keep the reusable bags in my car. I have like a basket in my car that has a winter hat. It has a jacket, it has my reusable bags, and it has an umbrella because, but I like to, instead of just throwing it on my back seat, I like to keep it in this basket to keep it organized. However, I have another reusable bag that I keep in the door of my car because if I go into like the grocery store to pick up two things, or I go into a drugstore, or I go into anywhere else... I have this bag that I can just grab very quickly and take with me. And it's like a fabric grocery bag, whereas the other ones are plastic. This fabric one would fold up and fit in my pocket if I really wanted to do that. So I grab this bag and I'm like, okay, well now I'm getting cherry tomatoes. I am going to get the black and chicken strips. And then I decide, well, I might as well see if they have the 647 rolls because they might. I find the black and chicken strips. And when I'm walking through the freezer section, one of my favorite lunches to have when I was just eating really whatever I wanted was Michelina. Michelina is just a frozen food company like, you know, uh, Weight Watchers has frozen foods, Lean Cuisine, Healthy Choice. Michelina isn't exactly healthy, but they had this beef and peppers meal. It was be it was like chopped up beef 
green peppers and white rice. Oh my God, so good. And it wasn't a lot of food. I realize now why like 70% of the population is fat and overweight. I saw that meal at Food Lion and I picked it up because I was really curious. It is like, and I mean, when I say it's only a little bit of food, it's only like this much. 43 carbs just for that meal. I said, no wonder, you know, it, no wonder. That's all I have to say. No freaking wonder. And so I found the black and chicken strips, which was good. And then I went to, I got the tomatoes. I got two, I get like these sweet cherry tomatoes and I got two containers because Bill eats a salad every day and I eat a salad a couple times a week. I don't eat it every day like he does. And tonight with pizza, the pizza is filling enough that I don't need a salad. So, wait a minute, let me figure out what is that color. Mm, 907, okay. Um, I go in the aisle where the bread is. No 647 rolls. And I was like, I'm going to get home and we're not going to have any rolls. So, I decide to get these sandwich thins that are keto. I'm like, well, this is going to be better than nothing. So I get home and, oh, I get up to the register. Now, when I take that reusable bag in, I will put, and usually it's only like, you know, a couple items. I'll put the items in the bag versus getting a cart. So I put them up on the conveyor belt. The tomatoes aren't ringing up. And the cashier looks at me and says, do you know how much these were? I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how much they were. And I was like, of course. And I said that and he like kind of laughed. I was like, of course they're not ringing up. Well, he didn't care about getting a price check. He's like, do you think these were like $2.99? I said, yeah, that sounds good. That's probably what it was. I don't have any idea. No idea. So he rang them up as $2.99 because you would have had to call somebody for a price check and then eh, no. Like I said, I don't know how much they were, but they were at least $2.99. And that sounds right for like a little container of cherry tomatoes, I guess. But so I get out of the store, I come home, and yeah, unload the groceries. I have lunch. Oh, so when I'm unloading the groceries, I go to put stuff in the freezer. Not only do we have an entire bag of 647 hamburger rolls we also have an entire bag of kaiser rolls <laughs> so i didn't need to get any rolls but if i would not have tried to find them or get them we would have had none at the house because that's how that works for me but yeah and i know i, I feel like this whole video has just been me bitching but it's more like venting like really so, like I said, I have been reading. So, I have been reading B.A. Paris's, and B.A. Paris is a woman. Looked her up online. Um, her new book called The Guest. It does not disappoint. Everyone in that book has something to hide, and I only have about 100 pages left to read. All the things are happening now. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, I mean... The mark of a good book is when I say, what the fuck? Like four times. Yes. Out loud. Yes, yes, yes. And the chapters are somewhat short, which I like that too, because like I said, today I had a couple cups of coffee and I read all morning while the guys were here doing the tree. And I would read like two chapters and go check on them. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, they did such a fantastic job cutting that tree down. Um, but yeah, so I've been reading that and I bought that book. Like I said, I have bought a couple of the last two books I've read. I have bought now I asked my dad and my stepmom for my birthday next month to get me a Kindle unlimited subscription because there was like a 40% off deal or something I found. So for six months, it would cost like $96 or something. 
I forget how much it is normally. And they usually spend like $100 on us for our birthdays. So because the whole year was like $172 or something. And I was like, yeah, I don't expect them to get that. But I would appreciate six months. And then at Christmas time, I'd ask them for like, then get me a whole year, you know, if you want to do that. I texted my stepmother the link because I always let her know instead of my dad. And she never wrote me back. So I'm not sure if she got the text message or if the link didn't work or I don't know what. But I have bought some cross-stitch stuff here recently. And, you know, I have been pretty good about not spending money. But I have spent some money. <laughs> I bought some fabric. I got some fabric from 123 Stitch has a whole bunch of fiber on a whim Ada, which I love. So I bought a couple pieces of that. I bought some pole stitches Lugana because I think I'm going to stitch. Some of these pieces will be better suited, I think, especially like the Bella Filipina because there's like a bunch of fractional stitches in the face. It is just easier to stitch those on even weave. But, um, yeah, so I bought some fabric and then I also bought, I want to say I bought two more Bella Filipina patterns. I can't remember which ones I got. I got fairies or something. So pretty. I will show you when they come in. And then I also got, I think, two more Mirabilias. I bought August Peridot Fairy because OMG, I have always loved that one. And I don't know why I haven't stitched it because... Her wings and her dress. It's just beautiful. And I forget what the other... I bought another Mirabilia. I can't remember what it was. Like I said, when they come in, I will show you guys. And I'm pretty sure that my friend Vicky, the subscriber, she bought me Villa Mirabilia off of eBay because that's supposed to get here on Wednesday. So very excited if that's the case because, like I said, I was looking for it. And then it was crazy pants, banana pants prices on eBay. So I hope she didn't spend like too much money. But man, do I appreciate that because that is one when I first started stitching Mirabilia's that I wanted to stitch. And yeah. So I did join the couple of Mirabilia groups that are on Facebook. I even joined Jill Rensel's um framing page because I have had a lot of my pieces framed by her. She lives in Utah, so you have to mail your pieces to her, but I've never had an issue doing that. I mail it uh, so I can track it either by FedEx or something like that. And then she will contact you via email usually with like mock-ups of framing and stuff like that. Now, I may, I'm really disappointed and just, uh, I guess just sad that the stitching post, their framer retired so they don't do framing anymore. But there is a place in Severna Park that does frame cross-stitch. Because I belong to a group on Facebook called Cross-Stitchers of Maryland. And a couple of those people have had things framed by them. So, because see, with Mirabilia's, like, they need to be framed. I can do the framing myself, but I like somebody else to do it most of the time. I framed plenty of my own pieces myself, but... So we'll see when I'm done this. I am hoping to, I'm hoping this week to get a lot done on this because I have the whole week off. Now I say that with a grain of salt because I don't know. I mean, the only thing I really have to do is Tuesday I have to meet Bill by his work at like the corporate office because he is signing uh, we are signing his retirement papers because he is officially retiring from that job on August 1st, but he has another job lined up. But we have to sign stuff like direct deposit and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing that Tuesday morning. But other than that, and I think we're going to take my car into the shop. So we bought my car at a dealership that's about 40 minutes away because I wanted a red two-door and they were the only ones that had it. 
Well, whenever we need service for the car, we need to drive there. And last summer, my air conditioning went up and it's been, it's gone up like two years in a row. So Bill finally was like, okay, what the hell is going on? Because I mean, my car is six years old now, but still like my car is still like a somewhat new car because I don't drive my car. I mean, I'll go a whole week and only drive to the grocery store because of working at home. So last June, it was hot. It was hot as fuck, I remember. Bill had called them and they said, yeah, there's been a recall on it. So it's one of two things wrong with it. And Bill was like, well, you did something last year. And they're like, okay, well, it's the other thing. So we ride all the way up there. And now I say, you know, it is like when we go up there, because we're going when Bill gets home from work at 3.30, it's like rush hour when we're going up there. So it's a little bit chaotic the way we have to go. We go up there. And I don't know why they couldn't have told him this on the phone. The part that they needed. Oh, and we tried to, we went up there late August because we were getting ready to go on vacation and we wanted the car fixed before we drove to Ocean City because you don't want to drive late August with no air conditioning. Well, we get up there and the guy's like, well, the part's on back order. And we look at each other and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me right now. And he's like, yeah, I have about 10 cars in front of you that are waiting for this part. And I was like, so Bill said, okay, well, just call me when the part comes in. So we decided we took Bill's truck to Ocean City because there was no way in hell that we were taking my car with no air conditioning. So the part came in. It took months. I want to say the part came in like around Christmas time. I don't remember, but I mean, I went without air conditioning and luckily it was at the end of summer, but still. So Bill's like, oh, the part came in. We need to go take your car up. Well, he just never scheduled it. We just never did it. Well, he was like a month ago, he said to me, we need to get your car in before it gets really hot again. And I said, well, I'm off the end of April because my boss is on vacation. I said, so that would be the perfect time to do it because, you know, for us to drive my car up there, I needed to stop work early. Well, I won't have to this week because I'm off. So I don't know if he's called, but that is the plan. We're going to try to take my car up there Tuesday night, Wednesday something. I don't know, sometime. But besides that, that's it. Nothing, nothing else to do. Um, I think I'm going to do, I am going to wind up going over here because that goes way down there, but I might, <laughs> I think I'm going to end the video. So, but I have, I'm going to do these two lines and we're going to. Yeah, I'm going to step high stitch the rest of the day because I don't have anything else to do, like I said, besides make up Bill's salad. But I hope you guys have all had a good week. And I hope that if you haven't also encountered any irritations, that they are quick and easy because, you know, I say all that stuff, but I am also so very blessed to have my family, have Bill, have the life that I have. Because all of those things that I mentioned, very minor in the grand scheme of what can happen. And I say that because Saturday night, we both went to bed. I stayed, I mean, we, we both stayed up and watched TV in our rooms for a little bit. So I was awake and I just happened to go on Facebook. I'm rarely on Facebook except to check um, the groups I belong to. Well, I am friends with people from high school that I wasn't really friends with. You know, you just, yeah. There's a girl, a woman, and when I saw her post, she had posted it 13 minutes ago. Her husband passed away unexpectedly that morning at 2 in the morning. 
And she put this long post and she was like, I don't even know how to deal with this. So my whole graduating class is turning 50 this year. She just turned 50 a little while ago. She has been with her husband since she was 20. My heart broke um, just reading the post and I thought, not, nothing matters. Like everything that is an annoyance, all the things that I just said, so very utterly trivial and doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. And I was immediately just heartbroken and sad for her. And I could still, I could hear Bill's TV. So I came upstairs and climbed into bed with him. And I was just like, I'm sad. And he's like, what? Why? So I explained. So I sat there and cuddled with him for a couple minutes because it just, it just makes me so thankful that I still have him and I can't imagine my life without him, you know, with being a widow. Um, and I hope I am a long way from having that happen. So I immediately, you know, that, that, that woman has been in my prayers the last couple days. I have just felt for her so much. And I mean, they have children and grandchildren, like just heartbreaking. Um, and what's fun, not funny, but she, he, he passed away from a heart attack. And in her post, she said, you know, he, we had went to bed, we had had a normal dinner, we went to bed and he woke up and it was like, he had flu-like symptoms. She's like, it didn't even come across as a heart attack, she said, but he was like kind of dizzy and stumbling. And by the time she called the ambulance and they got there, they were doing compressions and he just died. And it was just, it had to have been so utterly surreal and awful. Um, I feel so bad for her. I, I really, really do. And yeah, I mean, that puts so much into perspective as far as none of the, none of the bullshit matters, you know, when you have something like that happen. Um, so hug your loved ones, tell people you love them. Um, yeah, I, I tell Bill all the time, like when he comes home today, when he's gone all day like that, like six to six, I miss him, especially on a weekend where he would normally be off work. Um, but yeah, I am, I am really looking forward this week to having off and having a break from work and being able to stitch and do videos for you guys. I'm considering doing some tags. I need to find some tags, you know, questions that um, I can go ahead and answer. I need to find some needlework ones. So I might do some searching and see if I can find those. Just because if I do a video like every day next week, I'm not going to have very much to talk about because, uh, well, I say that and who knows? Who knows? But I mean, you know, my life is pretty steady where it's not too exciting on a regular basis. I'm just a normal person that does normal things. And um, yeah, so... But okay, I hope you guys have all had a good weekend and that you are enjoying whatever you're doing or stitching on. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.